Hello everybody, welcome back to On the Mission Trail. Today we're going to be reviewing a new movie on Netflix called Bird Box. I'm Miranda, this is Caesar, and let's talk about it. Bird Box was directed by Suzanne Byers. It's based on a novel by Josh Mallerman. It's not doing too great in the ratings. It has a 6.7 <laughs> on IMDb, 64% on Rotten Tomatoes, and 52% on Metacritic. If you guys aren't aware of the plot, there's this unknown presence that's driving people to suicide, and they figure out that the only way to prevent that is to be blindfolded or like to not look at it, I guess. Yeah, it somehow goes through digital media as well, so if you're looking at it through a camera, it also still gets you. Yeah, which is... A weird, weird stipulation, I guess. Yeah. So the movie is basically the characters trying to figure out how to navigate through this post-apocalyptic world while like not seeing the outside world. And it kind of flips between two different parts of the story. So at first it shows you our main character, Sandra Bullock. She's trying to get two children to the other side of the river for like a safe haven. But then it goes back in time about five years to when the epidemic first started. So before we kind of get into spoilers, we're just going to discuss the problems that we had with it. Yeah, which kind of a key thing about the movie is that a lot of it is spoiled right off the bat. Yeah, so I mean, if you're splitting the movie in half, basically, and one of the parts is like showing you the ending, it kind of takes away all tension and suspense and it, stuff. It's yeah. like, oh, okay, so Sandra Bullock is alone with two children, and then later we're introduced to all these characters. It's kind of pointless. It's like, why, why am I going to care about these characters when I know for a fact that they're not going to show up later in the film? Like the vignette format detracts from the film because it tries to make certain scenes suspenseful when uh, like other characters die off. Like, well, like oh man, I wonder what's going to happen to this guy. It's not like it shows me in the first 10 minutes of the movie. That's why a lot of horror films don't start off with the last scene in the movie. Because yeah. the whole point of horror is to like build up to that, that suspense. But if you kind of like show the ending first, it doesn't really make sense. The main reason why they did that is because they knew that people would get bored of watching Sandra Bullock alone on a river for like 20 minutes. And screaming at children. <laughs> the writing overall was just not... It's pretty weak. It was weak and it was predictable. It, yeah, that was one of my biggest problems with this movie, that it was predictable to the point of boredom. Especially because it just like gives you the ending right away. And it also is predictable in the sense that the characters act exactly how you would expect them to act. Like, this is crazy character. He's yeah. crazy. This, this is, is the dumb blonde one. She's the dumb blonde one. And then they never, like, act outside of their character. There's no, like, character arc throughout really. the whole entire movie. They're just archetypes throughout the whole thing, and that's it. This and movie is very spoon-fed. I don't like that. I don't, Especially from something that's supposed to be a horror. I really don't like it when it just gives you everything. That's the other thing. This movie is a horror, but there was absolutely no oh, scary anything. No. There's no scary elements. It wasn't even like was no lit tension. scary. They were always like inside with like a fully lit house. Yeah. <laughs> like they always had electricity and like like really nice lighting and it was like a, a gorgeous house. There was nothing scary about this. The only thing that I did like about this movie though was the inciting incident. Like it when was kind it of started, hilarious too, though. it just like randomly starts um, when she's getting an ultrasound uh, at the hospital, and then a woman just starts like bashing her head into a window. Yeah, and that's like kind of the one of the first faults is right in the beginning of the movie. Um, <laughs> it's like all its dramatic scenes are unintentionally hilarious. Mm -hmm. Even though it's supposed to be like serious and it's like, oh, it's so scary. Like, this is such a suspenseful movie. That was the only time where I, I sensed the like danger in the whole movie. It was really in focus in the beginning too. It was like, okay, are we talking about the scary spooky wind? Like, are we talking about the, the breeze monster? Or are we talking about like her upbringing? Or are we talking about the babies? Or are we talking about like the survival scenario? Like what is this? There was just like so many things at once that they're just trying to shove. Like yeah. this is all the information that you need for the whole movie and we're just gonna give it to you right now. You know what I think that might be? I think it's like I said, like the media really defining it. Mm -hmm. um, or the format, I guess, the platform. Yeah. Is because Netflix knows probably that people tune out pretty quick. So they like keep 
that reiterating be, like what's might, going on yeah i think that might be part of why it's all shoved on you so much so quickly that makes a lot of sense yeah like you could totally tune out of this movie and like still know where you're at in the movie because yeah. they keep like reiterating the same stuff i think that might be why they went with that like really unnecessary vignette format mm -hmm. because it keeps going back like you said and it's like, oh, in case you just tuned out, here's what's happening again. It's like the last time on Bird Box, but yeah. it happens the whole movie. <laughs> yeah. Evil. If you see it, that takes on the form of your worst fears. Every contact we have had with the outside has brought us death. <laughs> There's probably like a total of three to five minutes of cool looking stuff. In it was the movie. literally every time she was at the lake. That was the only time the movie looked cool neat. to me. Yeah, it was kind of neat. But they didn't even like, they're like, oh wait, no, we have to go back because this is getting boring. <laughs> it was so shaky too. A lot of the camera work, I hate that about like contemporary movies is that a lot of it is so shaky when it really doesn't need to be. It's like, oh, do you get how tense this is yet? <laughs> Isn't it so startling? It's like, dude, let me see it. Or That's else I can't tell what's if it's supposed to be startling or not. Like, I get that you're playing very loud, dramatic music that's supposed to be tense and stuff, but please let me see it. There's giving me motion sickness. No, if you look at it too for too long, you might like realize what it is. Never take off your blindfold. We will make it. You take this and you go. So overall, there was no really redeeming qualities about the movie. It was no. just like overall bad. Bad writing, bad pacing, terrible characters. I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't recommend it whatsoever unless you're just like looking at something to poke fun at. It's pretty, it's pretty funny if you're not taking it seriously. I wouldn't recommend watching it alone. I mean, if you already have Netflix and you're like at a party and you want to put something in the background, you know, like while people are talking. Yeah. This is like a pretty go-to movie. You're not going to miss anything. And even if you do decide to like tune in, you'll yeah. you'll know what's happening. Yeah, it's not a big <laughs> deal if you miss it. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody, except if you want background noise. Yeah. Pretty good background noise, I would say. It sounds decent. Yeah. Even the score was kind of bad, though. It was like whatever. It was, it was it was an offensive. It was a really <laughs> unremarkable movie. I'll forget about it next week. Don't take my children! Did you hear that? The creatures. What, what score would you give it, you think? So a 1 would be like a complete waste of time. A 10 would be like it improved my time, it improved my life or something, you know? A 5 is like down the middle, like it didn't do either. It's okay. Like it's fine, it's okay. I would probably give this movie like 3 or 4. If I was watching it myself, probably a 3, but because I was watching it with you, uh, I, I guess like a 4. And we had a good laugh about it. Yeah, but it was <laughs> it's still like a bad movie. They shouldn't have blown all their, all their budget on Sandra Bullock. There's plenty of good actors out there and actresses. Nobody would have watched it if it wasn't Sandra Bullock though. I guess, but then they could have made a cool monster instead of just an evil breeze. Whatever. There's a million could-haves. <laughs> yeah, bad movie, wouldn't recommend it. Don't watch it unless you want to make fun of it. Watch A Quiet Place instead, I guess. Yeah, A Quiet Place would be a way better alternative to this movie. Thank you for joining our movie discussion. Join us next time when we'll be discussing hopefully a better movie. Thank you. Bye. Won't take much. <laughs>